Hi guys and welcome back to another Dot Race video and today I'm going to be giving you some tips, pointers and tricks on how to improve your braking within Superbike 22. Check the controller overlay on the right hand side to give you a good indication of what I'm doing with the uh, analog sticks, what I'm doing with the brakes when under the most heaviest of braking markers in Superbike 22. Quick update regarding controller, everything is completely default, it's just a basic DualShock 4 controller playing on PC. Updates on the configuration, it's simply just the left trigger as acceleration, right trigger as acceleration, R1 to downshift, L1 for clutch, square for rear brake, triangle for upshift, and that's pretty much all of the things you need to know. But before we get really into the nitty gritty parts of it, we're going to have to start in the pit, and I'll explain to you what brake disc to use, for which riding style you prefer. So once we're back in the pit, we're going to head down to tyres, brakes and fuel check tab, and then from there we're going to check out the front brake disc. Now each front brake disc does something different. The more heavier mass ones, they will absorb more temperature, where the thinner ones, smaller ones, will not absorb as much, but will still be very effective. If you're quite heavy on the control and you press the brakes very, very firm, I would advise going for a 12 inch disc. Whether it's the high mass or the low mass, I would have to gauge that on your own riding performance. Definitely worth trying out both. But for me, I'm a rather gentle breaker, I don't hit it that hard. I prefer the higher mass 13 inch disc, or even the lower mass, but the 13 inch disc is the one for me. So now we move over to the rear brake discs. Only two choices available for this one, both steel brake discs, just like the front brake, not carbon, unlike MotoGP. So if you are finding yourself struggling, braking really late compared to you doing MotoGP, one of the biggest reasons is that these are steel brake discs and not carbon discs. But for me, I would always advise going for the 9-inch brake disc. Never really tried the 8 one and didn't really find it did much or changed much when I actually tried it anyway. So I would stick with the 9-inch brake disc if I was you. Next thing I would advise you to do is to go into the riding aids and have a look at some of your braking system aids or assistance that you have right now. I personally would never recommend auto brakes because unfortunately you will not learn anything and the game holds your hand way too much. Now if you're a new player you could consider trying the assisted front brake, you can try from a moderate or high setting, I would advise trying it on high first, change it down to moderate when you feel a little bit better and then disable it completely. Under no circumstance do I recommend joint brakes, they work against you, the AI and the computer doesn't do it properly so I would always advise against joint brakes because it will apply too much rear brake and make your life a misery when you're not trying to apply any rear brake at all. And the final setting there, of course, is the brake input modulation. Now, in MotoGP 21, I found this to be a godsend. I would highly recommend this setting if you are really struggling with stoppies and you just can't seem to get any grip with the bike. Definitely consider brake input modulation enabled. But now that's over and done with, if you do need any more assistance regarding my settings in the sense of calibration, etc., yes, it, once again, it is completely default. Everything is standard. The bikes have not received any setup changes. I'm doing this completely default so you guys can get the basic experience as possible. Definitely play around with everything in the braking settings, such as changing the different styles of assists, changing the braking discs. You've got to try everything to find what works for you. And most importantly, don't stress out. End of the day, it's going to be tough. It is tough, but just take your time and you'll learn to improve. So another little tip I'm going to give you moving on with uh, Mandalika, with Hafi Siren, is a very underrated tip that works extremely well for me. And that is pushing backwards on the left analogue stick. Under heavy braking, when you're pushing the rider's weight backwards, the rider's weight effectively works as a parachute, so the wind will blow into the rider and with him putting the pressure onto the rear of the tyre, when under heavy braking, the bike is not going to want to stop it. If you push your weight forward, as in tucking in and pushing forward, it is going to cause you to stop it, which is obviously bad for business, which will probably cause some sort of accident or crash. So bear that in mind, I do highly recommend always pushing back on the analog stick when possible. Not every corner is possible, it sometimes doesn't happen, but if you can, definitely get into the habit of pushing backwards on the analog stick. Second tip I would like to give you is do not neglect the rear brake. The square button for me is the rear brake and pressing that quite firmly under heavy braking is crucial for my braking. Anything with a long long braking marker, so from going from a, a sixth gear into down to second shift, 
got to give a lot of rear brake for that one because otherwise I'm probably not going to get the bike stopped or I could even run it a little bit wide into the corner. Now my third tip before we move on is to be very careful with the downshifts. Try and time your downshifts rather than just slamming them down to first gear. So for example going into turn one here I'm going to brake very firm and I'm going to drop it quite gradually. Not as sequential as maybe some riders would do it but I like to do it in a way where I can get the, the rev limits high on the previous gear. But it's very important that you don't downshift too rapidly. If you do downshift really aggressively like you can do on MotoGP 22 or Ride 4 for example, you're going to have a bad time and the rear tyre is going to just have way too much power. It's going to start slipping, it's going to start sliding and you're either going to go wide or you're going to crash. So be very careful when timing the downshifts. Do it in the correct manner, don't blow up the engine and you'll be absolutely fine. So when the rain comes down and it's been treacherous conditions, it's still important to know that everything you've learned so far needs to be applied here, but just a little bit softer. Bear in mind, braking at full lean angle is always going to be tough, whether it's dry or wet. But when it's wet, you have to be very, very careful. So in this clip, you're going to see I'm going to be relatively gentle on the brakes, the, uh, the acceleration, and even the analog stick control. It's going to be a very gentle procedure in this track here in Aston when it's really wet. So again, everything still applies, but you just gotta be really smooth. So we're going into the right hand side here, nice and gentle on the brakes, only reaching around 50% to about 85% as the actual trigger press, as you're gonna see up here onto the right hand side as well. Getting to 100% just briefly, just to lock the front and then start to release the brake so we don't end up turning and falling over. Very important to be smooth very important to be gentle and in control of the motorcycle if you're going to be hitting it and pressing dead firmly moving the analog stick wildly you're going to have a very rough time so don't forget what you've learned just because it's wet just be a little bit more careful and a little bit more smoother upon the button presses and the analog stick movement so as we come to the conclusion of this video i just want to reiterate that uh, if you do need any more assistance let me know in the comment section down below and let me know even in the Discord server or even on Instagram. If you want to get in touch and you need some assistance, come into the server or any of these ways to contact me and let me know and I'll try and give you as much advice as I possibly can. Bear in mind, my braking on Superbike 22 is not perfect yet. I still need to improve myself, but getting used to it, getting the feeling, changing the configuration around, I'm beginning to find my rhythm and stride with Superbike 22. And I expect the same for you all, so just stay focused change the settings, change the brake discs, and try everything. Don't neglect or hesitate to check anything because it's worth trying. You might find that the suspension setting is what you need to get the braking right. Jump in and change it, but for now, I'll leave everything as completely default as a base for everyone to start off with and to learn the game as it is. But well, just a few points to reiterate before we do conclude the video. Got to be smooth on the brakes. In some braking zones, absolutely go for a full fist of brake. In some of those tighter corners where you're going to be leaning and braking at the same time, you've got to be smart, you've got to be gentle with the brake. And if you find that you're going into a corner and you're a bit too hot and you really don't think you can pull any more in the front brake, use that rear brake. You've got it there, use the rear brake. Now of course, the rear brake being on a square button, for example, is a singular press. So it can either be held or pressed once. You can even multi-tap it if you want to try and slow it down, but not enough to slide the rear out. It's another great tip for you to use. Definitely use the rear brake. Please do not neglect the rear brake. It needs love just as much as we all do. And speaking of love, I would love it if you could hit the subscribe button and hit the like button if you really enjoyed this video. But most importantly, if it helped, let me know in the comments section down below. And if you need any more assistance, don't hesitate to contact me. But upon that note, guys, thank you very much for watching. I do hope it's helped. I really do. And I will see you in the next video. Like, comment, and subscribe. And ciao for now. Oh, hi. Didn't quite see you there. Good to see you're still here. If this video didn't quite set your appetite, then why not watch some more Dot Trace content by clicking the video shown on screen now. Furthermore, if you would like to follow me on social media, you can do so now with the links down in the description. Consider subscribing so you don't miss a single Dot Trace video.